What is good, everyone? What is good? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're jumping back into the Go Battle League arena, this time once again returning to the Great League Remix to feature a team with Lurantis as our sweeper. And this video is about to be crazy. Lurantis is insane as a sweeper. It deals a heavy amount of damage with its fast move of Fury Cutter, as well as its charge moves, Super Power, and Leaf Blade. Now, its charge moves give it fantastic coverage over pretty much the entirety of the meta, with Poison types being one of the only real exceptions here. We're also going to be featuring Toxapex on the lead. Toxapex is a fantastic pairing with Lorantis because it does provide the bulk that Lorantis misses out on, and it does have some coverage over the fire types that Lorantis wants to watch out for, as well as has good coverage or decent coverage over some of the poison types. We're also going to be running with double on the safe swap because it is quite literally one of my favorite Pokemon to run in all of Go Battle League. I know I've mentioned it before, but double is going to be fantastic for us because it does provide us with coverage over pretty much everything in the meta. And we are once again running Wild Charge on our double to provide us with some coverage over the flyers that our Lorantis does not want to see late game. So essentially what I'm saying is we're going to be saving at least one shield for Lorantis late game. Our team composition is designed to allow Lorantis to sweep late game. Will we be successful and effective in doing this? Let's go ahead and find out. Hop straight into some battles. Getting straight into the first one here, we have Toxapex on the lead against the opponent's Quagsire. This is a terrible lead for us, as Quagsire is going to be dealing super effective Mud Bomb damage against our Poison-type Pokemon, as we will be pivoting into our safe swap of Double, and we are able to lure out the opponent's Golbat. This is fantastic for us, as we are, one, running Wild Charge, which will be able to one-shot the opponent as they don't respect the potential Wild Charge, but we're also able to avoid this Golbat late game with our Lorantis as Bang! Wild Charge one-shots the opponent's Golbat. They show no respect for the GOAT as we are able to successfully flip switch. This is amazing for us as we can now allow our double to go down with this one Mud Bomb, but we now have our Lorantis aligned against this Mud Boy. And remember, the Quagsire flinches even at the sight of a Blade of Grass as the opponent will be swapping into their Ferrothorn. Now, Ferrothorn is not a great answer for our Lorantis as Bang! Super Power does massive, super effective damage against the opponent's Steel Grass type Pokemon. We're going to pivot into our Toxapex here. Toxapex doesn't have a ton of utility for us at this point in the battle. So we're going to come in, bring in, or soak up all of this damage, save both shields for Lorantis, expend some energy here to KO the opponent. I could have gone for the aggressive farm down, but I don't think I would have been able to get there as we now are going to allow the opponent to farm up a massive amount of energy, but we have been successful in stalling the switch clock, meaning the opponent is either going to have to throw a move to take us out or they're going to have to allow our Lorantis to come back in. And like this, they will be taking out our Toxapex with a single Mud Bomb. And now they have two shields. We have two shields. It might get a little sweaty. They have a ton of energy. And we know that they're going to be baiting us. We're going to respect the potential Stone Edge by expending one shield. They match our shield on our Leaf Blade. They are now throwing another charge move. Will it be the Mud Bomb Shield Bait once again? No, they full send the Stone Edge. We're able to block the Stone Edge. Question is, will they be able to outpace and reach another Stone Edge before we can reach the next Leap Blade? It's going to be a race, and they do reach it before us. Will the Stone Edge be enough to KO our Lurantis? No, it is not, as we do survive on a reasonable amount of HP now in the critical health range but easily able to reach this next Leap Blade, KO the opponent's Quagsire as Lorantis calls game. Well played by the opponent. Thank you for the match as Lorantis able to claim that end game there. Shouts out the GOAT for taking Switch for us as we do see a Dunsparce on the lead in the next battle. We have another tough lead because Dunsparce will be running the charge move of Drill Run, meaning they can hit us for super effective damage. 
so we're going to want to pivot out into our double and we're met by a vigoroth safe swap so we're reasonably hard countered on the lead we're hard countered on the safe swap this is going to be a tough one for us to overcome but we're able to get to the back-to-back -back body slams these body slams are dealing enough damage onto the opponent to pressure them into expending one shield and the goat hanging on surviving on a singular hp able to flip switch able to gain shield advantage for us as we can now align our lorantis with this dunsparce as this will be a much better matchup for us as opposed to the toxapex aligned against the dunsparce as Dunsparce will be firing off Rock Slides, dealing neutral damage here onto us. And even though Lorantis is a glassy Pokemon, it's not doing that much damage. We're going for the surprise superpower here. We're able to land the superpower, which does massive super effective damage, but admittedly not as much as I was hoping that it would do, as I was hoping it would get them low enough to allow us to Leaf Blade down or Fury Cutter down, but we are not able to, as we're forced to pivot out into our Toxapex to avoid being KO'd by the opponent's next rock slide as we were debuffed in our defense from our superpower after pivoting out into our tox specs we're greeted by the opponent's jealous and we throw on terrible timing here will that be critical for us as everything that we have for this jealous is going to be resisted sludge wave is resisted given the ghost typing of the opponent's jellyfish as well as brian obviously going to be resisted by the opponent's water typing as well as we do survive on a handful of hp able to fire off another sludge wave gain the opponent's final shield did they just give us a win con they may have as they are very nearly at the back to back here on their dunsparce we're able to get to the back to back leaf blades we fully farmed down we have a leaf blade ready to go for the opponent's jellyfish as it does swap back in lorantis ko's the opponent's jellyfish and calls game well played by the opponent thank you for the match as the Laurent is able to fully Fury Cutter down the Dunsparce. Quite impressive. It didn't need to be that close as we were at the back-to-back. -back. We could have fired off a Leaf Blade. But like this, we're going to be diving into the next battle with another tough lead. And Polion on the lead against our Toxapex. Now, it's not a horrible lead for us, but Empoleon will be resisting our Poison-type moves. So we're going to be swapping out into our double, drawing out the opponent's Scrafty. Scrafty is not appreciating these double kicks. They are able to land this power-up punch onto us, build, boost up their attack one stage, but Scrafty will not be appreciating this wild charge as we're able to once again flip switch with the GOAT as we do have our Lorantis now aligned against the opponent's Empoleon. Now, even though our Fury Cutters are going to be resisted by the opponent's Steel Typing, even though they do have an Energy Head Start, as we will be expending our first shield, we're able to easily outpace the opponent here, as they will be pivoting out into their Jump Bluff, trying to catch the Charge move, but also not wanting to take any of that damage onto their Empoleon. We're going to pivot into our Toxapex here. Toxapex will be dealing super effective damage with its poison type moves and we throw on terrible timing here i have to be transparent i was a little bit shooken up shaken up i was shook by the opponent running bullet seed as opposed to fairy wind i'm trying to keep track of their energy trying to remember the counts for bullet seed and we allow another bullet seed to go through i was planning for them to be throwing a two turn move they're instead throwing a three turn move but they're going to be swapping out going for the snipe onto our Toxapex with their Empoleon, but we're able to avoid the sw the snipe, pivot into our Lorantis, fire off the back-to-back -back Leaf Blades before the opponent is able to get to their next charge move and will be KOing the opponent's Empoleon. And from here, it's pretty straightforward. We'll just fire off the superpower, shield up the opponent's acrobatics, right? Fire off the superpower. No, we're firing off the Leaf Blade for whatever reason. Superpower is the play here. I looked it up after the battle. Superpower will be dealing 18% onto the opponent, whereas the Leaf Blade, double resisted by the Grass and Flying Typing, will be dealing only 11%. So could have avoided that Nail Biter as we did claim that match on CMP tie. But Lorantis calls game. Well played by the opponent. Thank you for the match. Hopping into the next battle, we have another terrible lead. A Lowland Sand Slash on the lead against our Toxapex. We're going to immediately pivot into our double. Double able to get multiple double kicks worth of damage and energy onto the opponent's 
a lowland sand slash as we are able to eventually draw out their Cresselia. Cresselia going to be full sending the Moonblast, and that doesn't do too much damage as we can easily tank that and be able to survive with a reasonable amount of HP, firing off another body slam, grabbing the opponent's shield. That's massive. Anytime your opponent shields on their Cresselia, that should be a win for you as Toxapex does have play into this Cresselia. So we're not too concerned here as we are going to be able to get this Cresselia very low. Now into the critical health range, I can let the double go as it has done its job and even more than that as Grass Knot KOs our double, but we have grabbed the opponent's one shield, which is going to be massive for us end game. We're gonna go for the full poison jab down here to have a charge move ready for the opponent's Alolan Sand Slash when it comes back in. Will we get the full farm down? We do get the full Poison Jab down. Now have the Brine ready. We're going to have to tank this Drill Run onto our Toxapex. That's what it's here for. It is an absolute bunker of a Pokemon as it tanks that Drill Run. No sweat. Able to fire off this Brine. Will we grab the opponent's final shield? We do not as we're now staying in. Playing for the Drill Run catch onto our Lorantis, and we swap at perfect timing. Is it going to be the Drill Run? They do throw the Drill Run. We're able to take all of the opponent's energy there as they do reach another charge move. And unfortunately for us, should have pointed out in the beginning, the opponent is running the fast move of Powder Snow. These Powder Snows are adding up extremely quickly. Will they shield here and go for the fast move pressure? No, they do not. They let their... Sand Slash go, and I don't want to shade anyone, don't want to call out the opponent, just for informational purposes and for learning. That may have been a misplay, as we are easily going to be able to outpace this Jellicent here to the back-to-back -back Leaf Blades. We still do have one shield to our name, so we can easily shield up if we need to, but no, Lorantis gets to a third Leaf Blade before the opponent is able to hex us down, as Lorantis calls game. Well played by the opponent, and thank you for the match. Missing out on all of that powder snow damage may have been the misplay, the critical misplay for the opponent. As we do hop into the next battle, we have a Loma Mola on the lead against our Toxapex. I'm going to swap out there because it's a reasonable lead for us. They're going to be dealing super effective psychic damage with their Loma Mola onto our Toxapex. We swap out, we draw out the opponent's fairy Pokemon, and it will be the Clefable. Clefable will not be appreciating this wild charge. Will we be able to KO? No, we are not, as Clefable is a bit tankier than I had anticipated, and I'm molding once again as I'm thinking, how does Clefable win CMP against anything? But it is able to win CMP against our double, KO our two times debuffed in defense double, and get to another charge move against our Toxapex. I'm thinking we resist everything that this opponent can throw at us, but no, they're running the Psychic as Psychic does do heavy, super effective damage. We're going to pivot into our Lorantis here against the opponent's Aloma Mola, as Aloma Mola will be claiming our first shield with this Psychic, and I'm expecting them to pivot out. They do pivot out, unfortunately, into a Poison type. It will be the Drapion. Now, this is a brutal matchup for us, as Drapion able to deal super effective Poison Jab damage and able to deal heavy neutral crunch damage onto our Lorantis. We do grab the opponent's first shield. Will they respect this superpower? They don't necessarily have to. As they don't, they soak that damage. We're not able to get... Oh, we are able to get to another charge move. This will be enough to KO the opponent. Will they respect it? Lorantis surviving on one HP, grabbing the opponent's final shield. But this is going to be a GG for us as they now have a massive amount of energy. Their Loma Mola is almost entirely healthy. And we are now going to be near the critical health range as we are on the brink of it. Our defense drops, and that's just a brutal sequence of events for us. As a Loma Mola calls game, well played by the opponent. Heavy assist from the Drapion. Shouts out, Drapion. Love that Pokemon. But thank you for the match. That was a bit of a tough one for us. Thinking about how we could have played that differently. Definitely firing off the Body Slams into the Clefable as opposed to the Wild Charge. I was anticipating that the Wild Charge would be enough to KO, but it unfortunately was not as the opponent was able to maintain switch advantage we needed switch in that battle to have any chance of winning after we lost switch it was pretty much a gg would it have gone differently if we would have won switch potentially as a loma mola would have been aligned to our Lorantis, could have contributed to some different results
Let's keep this thing moving though. Hopping into the next battle, we have Kofagrigus on the lead against our Toxapex. We fired off of Brine against the opponent before pivoting out into our double. We build up to the potential payback, throw the body slam, and we are able to successfully shield bait the opponent. Now you see how much damage one Dark Pulse did onto our GOAT, meaning we're able to easily tank one, but we over farm just a bit too much as another Dark Pulse will force us to expend our first shield before the opponent pivots out into their fairy type Pokemon. And this will be the Slurpuff. Slurpuff will not be appreciating that wild charge and also will not be appreciating these poison jabs as our play here is going to be to fully poison jab the opponent down. Slurpuff able to deal reasonable neutral damage with the charge move of energy ball remember slurpuff has fantastic coverage in its charge moves flamethrower energy ball play rough it's a really great pokemon that i featured before and spoilers will be featuring again as we're able to greet this opponent's cofagrigus coming back in with this brine will the brine be enough to ko the opponent no but we will be threatening the opponent's final shield here with a sludge wave as they are pivoting into their machamp we're going to grab the opponent's final shield before swapping back into our double, thinking how much damage will this wild charge do? Can we one shot? We very nearly do one shot the opponent's Machamp. They do have a charge move, but remember we still have one shield as we are able to easily Fury Cutter the Machamp down, expend our final shield here, greet the opponent's coffin as it comes back in with another Leaf Blade or with our first Leaf Blade as Lorantis is able to come off the bench and call game well played by the opponent and well played by the supporting actors on my team shouts out toxapex shouts out the goat double thank you for the match as we're hopping into the next one we have toxapex on the lead against a quagsire this is a lead that we've seen before and it's not a great one for us as the opponent is building up a massive amount of energy here they now are at the stone edge will they be full sending no they're just baiting with the mud bomb but they're able to catch a body slam onto a vigoroth this is not terrible for us as vigoroth will not be appreciating these double kicks and also will not be appreciating these body slams body slam damage starting to build up on the opponent's vigoroth they're going for the farm down but no they realize they will not be able to farm all the way down before we get to a third body slam and like this they're going to be firing off the brick break the absolute menace running brick break i fully respect that will they be able to get to another charge move against us no they are not as we do experience quite a bit of lag there i have no idea what's going on it's turning off the wi-fi there trying to catch the mud bomb onto Lorantis, able to catch the mud bomb even though we had to turn off the wi-fi and was it a game winning play looks like not as the opponent does have a haunter shouts out the spice from them haunter in the back we do have two shields but this is looking like it's pretty much over from here Lorantis has nothing for the Haunter as they do reach the back-to-back -back Shadow Punches. We do need to grab the opponent's final shield, so we will be expending our shield, hoping that this Leaf Blade will be threatening enough to force the, the opponent to shield, but no, they're smarter than that as they are able to go for the aggressive farm down onto our Lorantis, force us to pivot back into our Toxapex, and like this, it's going to be a GG as the opponent does have the mud boy in the back they're going to be able to easily survive a brine i have pretty much no play here this thing is over you'll see how much the brine does here just for research and scientific purposes brine deals respectable damage into the opponent's quagsire we need to get to another one but we're definitely not going to be able to as the mudshot user generates energy extremely quickly our play is to get the aggressive farm down but no we're not able to get there opponent mud shots us down disrespectfully well played by the opponent thank you for the match and thank you to all of my opponents that was a tough one to go out on there but that is the final battle of today's video hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully i was able to demonstrate the strengths of Lorantis and showcase how building a team that covers its weaknesses around Lorantis can allow it to sweep end game. Lorantis is just so spammy and hits so hard even in neutral matchups that it truly does feel like a fantastic sweeper. You definitely need to make sure that you draw out the opponent's potential poison types or their potential flyers in the back to allow Lorantis to have at least a reasonable chance to sweep that endgame.
I feel like we did a fantastic job here and we're able to have some spicy battles and a lot of fun along the way. If you made it this far in the video, please leave me a comment down below letting me know how you're enjoying the videos, what you're enjoying about them, what you're not enjoying, but also how your battles are going for you and just how you're doing in general. But that's going to be all from me. Thank you so much for stopping by. Remember to enjoy the small things. Peace.